But yeah, this Damn. is Nicole, and I'm here with J. Cole. That's for all the fans that waited, the bitch niggas that hated, old hoes we dated. Look, mama, we made it. Your son out in Barbados, cheese, eggs, and potatoes. Smoking weed on the beaches, my mind working like Play Doh. Yeah. Nobody's perfect, uh, nobody's perfect, eh, eh, uh. Hey, but you're perfect for me. Nobody's perfect, uh. Nobody's perfect, eh. Yeah, it was uh, the last week of the album. I had like five, I'm super sick, so I'm talking like nasally. But um, I had like five days to finish the album. Dang, it's hard. And I did two songs in that five days. First, I did Mr. Nice Watch with Jay Z, and then I did um, the Missy song. And I ran to Jay Z's office. I just do references sometimes, so like I will make the beat. And I just record, like with my bike right there, and I record a rough version. And I ran to Jay's office and I played both of those songs for him. I was like, yo, what you think about this? You think I should finish these songs? Because I only got five days left. And I had already played him the album, and he was like, yo, you're good. So he was like, yo, you need to finish those. Um, I finished Nobody's Perfect. I was, I was like, yo. Even when I was doing that, I was like, it sounds like an Aaliyah type of song. Like, I wish I had Aaliyah to sing this. And I instantly, as soon as I said it, my mind thought about Missy. You know what I'm saying? Because I wanted to work with her a year ago, but I could never get in with her. And it was a perfect thing. I wrote the hook with her in mind. You know what I'm saying? And, and she killed it. So how did it get in her hands? Like, you just sent it to her and I called, said, I need you. Yeah, I, called, I got in touch with her management and seen if she could even do it, if she's even interested. And I ended up Skyping with her. It was cool as hell. Like I was Skyping with Missy. It was a, it was a crazy um, thing. So I, I sent it to her through Skype. She heard it. She loved it. She went to the studio like the next day or, or whatever and knocked it out for me. What was your reaction when you first heard it? Like uh, when it came back? We was going crazy. We were going crazy. We was like, woo! You know, <laughs> to, to us, I don't know if like to the younger generation, they, you know, they probably like, Missy? Like, where's she been? But we, like, to us, you know, anybody that's, you know, college age and up I think I think we know what Missy was to us or whatever so for me to hear her it, I almost almost the same reaction as when I heard Jay on there like that's how excited I was now you know that's big to have her on a record that she didn't produce that's why a lot of people yeah. thought she was oh they thought producing. she oh they thought she produced it yeah oh that's dope I'll take that because she's an incredible producer too but yeah that was me This shit, but this shit is real, my nigga. This shit is incredible for me to see right now. This shit, nigga, I don't even have this, nigga. I don't know how you got this. It's a beautiful thing. We were in Phoenix last night, and um, I had a meet and greet at the school. At Arizona State, and when I got there, it was like six kids had my my album, and at first I'm like, yo, how you get my album? Like we super defensive or whatever. And then they pulled out the receipts, and they bought the album from Target. Target was selling them early, which I, it's all good, whatever. Um, I was just excited to see, and that same kid ended up in the first row. So while I was on stage, I had to show him some love and show everybody like it's real because to my fans, we've been waiting so long. I'm on a period when they was like, man, this thing is this ever gonna come out? And I was like that too, like. Am I gonna ever get a release date? You know what I'm saying? But so that my fans know and appreciate that moment when I hold that CD up, the physical CD, and they can really like they feel like I feel like ah, it's real. You know what I'm saying? You graduated from college. Yes. What happened in between college and you getting signed? What happened? Yeah, like a lot of great stories. If you got <laughs> if you got the time, um, a lot of stuff. I, you know what happened when you graduate college? A lot of people know this if they've been there or, or going through this right now. It's like a six-month period before. Some people are on it like a year ahead. They start applying for jobs. The late, the late comers like is like six months. Some of them three months before you graduate, you start applying for jobs. All my friends was applying for jobs, like nine to five positions in the city, PR positions. Some of them got jobs. Some of them uh, was graduating and was still waiting. I was like just chilling. <laughs> I was just like. Because I was so confident with the music, I thought I always felt like I was going to get signed in three weeks. Like, that was wow. my true feeling. Even though it never happened like that, I was like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm just be signed. Like, my mom would be like, what you going to do, son, when you graduate? I'm like, mom, I'm about to get signed. Like, it's cool. Chill out. Relax. But it didn't happen like that. So about two months after I graduated, this is a long story. Two months after I graduated, I'm like on rock bottom because I'm dead broke. Real life hits. I can't pay my rent. Can't pay for my food because I don't have no income. And I realized, like, yo. Fam, you gotta still work. Like it's not gonna come like that. So I had to go get a job, 
that that was part time, eight dollars an hour that allowed me the flexibility to still go to the studio late, call in when I wanted to. You know, you got those jobs that like the manager's cool, or whatever. So I, I had to work those jobs for like the next two years while I try to get on. That's so long story. I could I could have kept you, going. <laughs> you missed, but you missed a few months rent, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I stacked my. Yeah, I probably stacked the most rent ever uh, recorded in the history of uh, landlords. Like I probably had like a. I don't know. It was thousands of dollars of a tab, but I had this um, this landlord named Muhammad. He believed in me. Like I used to tell him my situation. Like, yo, Muhammad, I'm telling you, I'm, you know, I'm telling you, I'm, I do this for real. And this is New York City, so the fact he was a blessing to me because the fact that he believed me, he was like, you're my guy. Like I believe in you. You know what I'm saying? He let me stack up my rent so high. Like if I wanna got this record deal, I still owe him this. Like I, it was like college loan style. Like that's how much money I owed him on rent. You paid him back. Oh yeah, I paid him back. As soon as I got that advance, wrote him a nice check with some extra. You know what I'm saying? That's my man right there. Nice. Shout out to Muhammad. There's no way you watch this, but <laughs> baby girl, I can't imagine what it's like for you. I got you pregnant now inside. There is a life in you. I know you wondering if this is gonna make me think about wife and you. Like if you had my first child, would I spend my whole life with you? Now I don't wanna spend a night with you. I'm trying to talk. Now I ain't trying to pick a fight with you, I'm kind of lost, see, I've been giving this some thought lately and frankly I'm feeling like we ain't ready and it's, hold up now, let me finish, think about it baby, me and you, we still kids ourselves. how we gonna raise a kid by ourself? Handle biz by herself. A nigga barely over 20. Where the hell we gonna live? Where am I gonna get that money? I refuse to bring my boy and my girl in this world when I ain't got shit to give them. Now you have a record, um, Lost Ones. That's yeah. a favorite of a lot of people. Um, too. What inspired that song? Um, that was a real life situation. Not to get too personal because I feel like sometimes that can take away the effect that that record has on um, people. But that wasn't actually something that I had. That's something that somebody next to me or close to me was going through and it made me just think about like dang like i wonder what he's thinking about right now i wonder how she's feeling right now and that's why i approached that that song like that because if it was happening to me i don't think i could have did it as well i probably would have just spilled all my feelings out but because i was like third person and just seeing what he was going through and then wondering what she was going through it allowed me to like take the approach that i took which was first verse i'm telling his things and second verse i'm imagining like how i would feel if i was a female and that was happening to me, and I rapped it like that. And the third verse is more third-person perspective. Like, look, this is what happened. And he only liked it because it is, and she fell in love, and you know, it's more like that. Up and skate out, so girl, you gotta think about how the options way out. What's the way out? Uh, and I ain't too proud to tell you that I cry sometimes. I cry sometimes about it. And girl, I know it hurt, but if this world was perfect, then we can make it work. But I doubt it. I saw you on the red carpet, and you kind of were adamant about not selling out. Like, what is selling out to you? Um, I don't really know the definition of that word all the way, but to me, selling out would be like um, doing something that's not in my heart. Like, if I was to put out an album, if this album was full of like me trying to go for it, like if every song in the album were, or 50, 60% of the album was like hits, what I thought would be hits, because I want to make the radio. Like, if this don't work, maybe this will work. To me, that would be like, Equivalent, um, and maybe one day I'll make an album. Maybe six years from now, four years from now, three years from now, I'll make an album with a bunch of hits or whatever. But right now, it didn't feel right. It felt like I needed to tell stories or whatever. To me, just selling out is going against what you believe for like for a commercial gain. You know what I'm saying? But I don't mean anybody that does hits. Like some people are born to make hits, so you're not a sellout just because you make hits. But just for me, that's probably what I was saying when I said that. And what do you want your legacy to be? Oh uh, man. I just want to, I used to be like, man, I want to be the greatest. But now I realize, like, perspective, everybody's perspective, it's objective. Like, nobody can really be the greatest. Like, I say Tupac, somebody can say Jay-Z, and we both right. But now I just know that I want to be on everybody's list. And whether it's 10 years from now or whatever, I want to be on, you know, everybody got that top five. Just put me on your list. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I would love to be number one, though. But if I'm on your list, I'll be happy 10 years from now. Sexing, no handcuff or arresting And I ain't coming off on my last name Cause I really can't take no stressing About where I done been, who I done hit Your homegirl saying he a bad boy But I'm signed to the rock, no time for the gossip Bitch, put down, I'm tired